Hi guys and welcome back um, to what is probably the most fussy, finicky, <laughs> detailed piece I have made in absolutely ages. <laughs> um, it's a bit of a long video so you know get yourself snacks, sit back, chill out, relax. Um, the first sort of five and a half-ish minutes is painting so if you're not interested in the painting then I need you to skip to like five minutes 40 I think that's exactly where it is um, to where I start sculpting all of the fuss <laughs> so uh, sit back and enjoy guys <laughs> If you are still here and uh, watching my painting, thank you. <laughs> um, just to let you know, I'm still using my usual Arteza paints. Um, I will leave a link in the description below, um, along with like all of the other materials that I use for this sculpt. Um, but yeah, thank you for sticking around and not skipping to five minutes 40. <laughs> Love you.
now that all my viewers are back in one place <laughs> and you've all come to join me, um, I painted the top half of the box off screen because otherwise, um, yeah, like the first 10 minutes would have all just been painting and no sculpting. And being as this is a sculpting channel, I thought <laughs> best, you know, move on to the sculpting. <laughs> Um, but actually, first off, I'm going to attach these cute little feet. I don't know where I got these feet from. I've had them for a while, but I uh, I think it was off of my Dragon Dice Box sculpture um, from when I bought them, which was quite some time ago. <laughs> I'll have to see if I can find a link for those for you in the description. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to attach those onto the bottom and then I'll do some sculpting. So I kind of lied a little bit when I said it was at 540 because I'm not sculpting yet. I'm putting on feet. <laughs> Just going to take this wee moment to uh, appreciate my brand new set of uh, tools courtesy of my mum for my birthday. Thank you very much. <laughs> wow. Okay, now we're going to start the sculpting. <laughs> you need to make yourself a Loch Ness monster out of some tin foil and then cover your Loch Ness monster in some super sculpy medium. Um, once you've done that, you'll have a still a Loch Ness monster. <laughs> this was definitely a, a trust the process um, sculpt for me because I have never sculpted a horse before in my life. Um, so I was just winging this as I was going. <laughs> um, yeah, once you've fully covered your Loch Ness monster, you'll need to give your monster some cheeks. So divide a small bowl, but bleh, ball of clay into two halves and then give them some cheeks and then you will have created a Loch Ness duck. Yeah, that's that's what comes after the Loch Ness monster. <laughs> Once you realise that you have created the Loch Ness Duck, you need to add a brow onto the top of the head and then look at it again and think, wow, you've created even more of a Loch Ness Duck. <laughs> uh, but you keep going with it just because uh, this is what you've decided to sculpt. <laughs> um, so I decided to move away from the head because I had clearly not made a horse yet and decided to attempt to do the legs. I was looking at reference pictures of like a baby horse what are they foal i almost said fowl then which is a bird so foal <laughs> um yeah i went on to create the front legs first attached those and then after that moved on to the back legs and then it started to look a little bit more like a horse <laughs> Once I was reasonably happy with the legs, I decided to move back onto like the Loch Ness Duck's face. <laughs> um, I'm just using some pre-baked Super Sculpey as eyes. Um, and then I'm gonna go on and attach the eyelids, which I do by rolling out teeny tiny snakes of um, clay and then just sort of blend them gently into the face.
It was at this point where I felt like I had made a half dinosaur, half horse hybrid. <laughs> um, so I thought I'll try and attach some like eyebrows, maybe that will help. But no, I feel like I made him look even more dinosaur by the end of the, the brow shaping moments. <laughs> it, it takes a while for this uh, little guy to look like a horse, but I do eventually get there. <laughs> I'm now going on to make the horse's nose and mouth. That certainly helps for it to actually look like a horse. <laughs> I'm doing this just by poking two like nose holes and <laughs> attaching a top lip. Now he starts looking a little bit more like a dragon as opposed to a dinosaur, but I'm I'm, I'm getting closer to mythical creature, so I just keep going with it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just carve in like a horse's mouth and then um, wrap the nostrils um, to make them look a little bit more flared like a horse's would um, and also attach some ears because horses have ears and that's I think a big part of why he looks like a dinosaur <laughs> so I figured ears were were important but then once his ears were on he started looking more like a sheep dinosaur <laughs> To give my sheep dinosaur a more unicorn feel, I need to attach his horn, but first that involves me stabbing him right between the eyes <laughs> so that I can attach a bit of armature wire. That's just so I can stabilise the uh, unicorn's horn, um, just in case it gets knocked or bumped. Um, it's got something in there to hold it together. Um, and then I just rolled out a teeny tiny snake of clay and then wrapped it round um, the armature wire and then sort of squeezed it as thin as I could at the top to try and create a point. I have to admit I did make something reasonably rude the first time so <laughs> the second time I did it this way. I won't tell you how I did it the first time. <laughs> um, then I wanted to give our unicorn a base so I just made like a little tin foil bed and covered that in some super sculpey as well. Um, then to attach the unicorn um, I t attempted several different methods. One was just sitting him on it and then I realised that's not going to work because it's not going to stay there. So then I covered him in super sculpey um, oven bake clay adhesive and then stuck him back down and then I thought that's not going to be sturdy enough. So then I pulled him back off, <laughs> stabbed him in the butt with um, two more bits of armature wire and then sort of shoved him back down onto the new base. To create the horse's fur, which is uh, normally quite short, um, I just used my pin tool to make very, very small marks all over the horse, which took me a grand total of about three hours. <laughs> but um, because of the power of editing, you get to see the very, very short version, which is very much sped up <laughs> once all that was done. Um, just to get rid of all like the teeny tiny balls of clay that cover um, everything when you make these tiny marks, um, I just covered it in baby oil. Um, and then I went on to make his um, tail and his mane. Um, I'm just going to stab him in the butt again with more wire <laughs> to attach his tail. Um, I'm using cos clay because that's a good clay. It stays nice and flexible and it's actually really, really, really soft. So it's easy to sculpt things like fur and hair and stuff like that. It just, I don't know, it takes marks from the tools better than I think Sculpey does. Um, but it is a little bit harder to work with. Um, so it's... Give and take. It depends on how much flexibility you want with the clays. You could do this completely out of Super Sculpey or Cos Clay. Um, so don't think that you need to use these specific brands. If you've got other types of polymer clay, um, use those. You're painting it anyway. <laughs> so what does it matter what clay you're using? Um, but yeah, I find Cos Clay is great for 
taking in lots and lots of marks and details and textures. Um, so it's really, really good for hair. I wanted to add lots of like foresty, flowery, leafy details to this piece. Um, so I decided to cheat. <laughs> this is a cutter that you can buy for like, I don't know, like wedding cakes and stuff like that for fondant. <laughs> I'm going to cheat quite often in this purely because I'm making so many blooming woodland details. <laughs> um, and obviously I'm making grass here on the base. I'm literally just twirling my uh, ball stylus to make grass. Um, and then I went on to make the leaves. Now this is the first of what felt like 50 bloody million leaves. Literally I made so many leaves in this project. Um, to be quite frank, I never ever want to make another leaf again. I'm sure I will, but right now I don't want to make any more. <laughs> ever. Ever again. <laughs> uh, but basically I just use a cutter to cut out like the basic diamond shape of a leaf and then 50 gajillion hours making leaf details on them all <laughs> thankfully i will not show you every single leaf that i make because that would be absolute torture and we'd be here for a lot longer than this video <laughs> Once I finish adding in all of my tiny little woodland details, um, I put this unicorn into the oven. It was quite nice to bake <laughs> something at this point. I'd been working on this project for ages and had not baked anything yet. Um, and then it was on to all the details on the box. I have to admit, this was a long-winded process. <laughs> um, I started off with the trees. I definitely decided to use my cosplay for this because... Uh, it's far more flexible, so it's going to take a bit of a, a knock if, um, you know, I drop it, which I'm terrible for dropping stuff. <laughs> um, and obviously it's being touched a lot around like the edges and the corners where you're going to lift the box. Um, so I just figured cos clay would be the better option of clays compared to uh, my super sculpey, which will break, eventually break, because I'm touching it. <laughs> I apologise for the absolute chaos that is my desk at the minute. Uh, it, uh, it appears that I am quite happy to sculpt with everything around me. <laughs> I feel like I go through the process of, I might need that so don't put it away. <laughs>
I thought I'd share some more leaf making with you purely because I went through the torture of having to make them all so uh, you can go through some of the torture <laughs> with me. <laughs> My original plan was to um, paint my unicorn separately and then glue it on at the end but then I realised that uh, my, the box and the unicorn would not look like it was one piece, it would just look like something stuck on the top. Um, so I glued it on and then added loads more vines and leaves and pretty things um, to tie it all together so that it didn't look like I'd just stuck a unicorn on top of a jewellery box. <laughs> Just to go on and torture myself slightly more, I decided to add some even smaller leaves to the box. <laughs> because uh, why not? And these ones I had to you know, like hand cut each one individually because I didn't have a cutter small enough. Um, so yeah, that was fun. I added quite a few of these tiny little leaves as well. <laughs> I wanted to add a phoenix um, purely because one, I love phoenix, is, 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 phoenix eye, phoenix in general, <laughs> and two, because I'm currently playing um, Immortals Phoenix Rising and I'm really in love with Phosphor. <laughs> um, I'm not sponsored by them, by the way, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I wanted to add a phoenix just because uh, I'm totally in love with them right now, so I thought I'd make one as well. Um, I've sculpted the basic parts i didn't show like all the feather making purely because we'd be here you know six days from now still watching me <laughs> make feathers um but yeah i showed the basics um also you might notice that my clay has turned pink and <laughs> um, that's still cos clay it's just a different box that came in a different color it's the same stuff Once I finished adding in like the last few flowers and vines, it was finally time to put this unicorn in the oven. <laughs> I, I sculpted for a very long time. It was a big celebration for me. <laughs> um, after that, it was on to painting. Now, as you can see, this is not the colour of the final product. You will have seen it right at the beginning. <laughs> um, I painted everything in this lime green um, and then like really, really disliked the lime green but try to make it better by doing like a dark wash on it and hoping that that would fix it <laughs> but yeah I do go on to paint the background black and the starry night sky and stuff like that later on but you know I like to make things hard for myself so I painted it whole like the whole thing green first then did loads and loads of the details on all like my painting Um, you know I painted all the leaves and added in like all the gold and stuff like that and then realized that I didn't like it. 
<laughs> so I painstakingly off camera just so that you're aware <laughs> and you're not going to have to sit through that again. <laughs> um, painted it black. <laughs> So I was being a bit lazy and didn't want to get my airbrush out to paint my unicorn, mainly because I didn't want to tape off everything else. <laughs> so I'm using a uh, makeup brush, a blender, that I purchased from like my Poundland, which I have to admit, nothing in Poundland costs a pound anymore. If you ever come over to Britain, that is a lie. <laughs> Poundland does not charge a pound. This cost me £1.50. <laughs> if you are British, you'll understand how much that irks <laughs> um but yeah just used a uh, makeup brush to do all of my blending <laughs> If you want advice on how to paint eyes, my 
my best advice that I can put forward is don't breathe. <laughs> like literally hold your breath. <laughs> because that's what I do. I paint the eyes and then I do like this big inhale of air because I've realized that I've not breathed in ages. <laughs> Once I finished all of my painting, I went on to add like these teeny tiny little beads that I own. Don't know what from, but I do own them. <laughs> um, I just dipped like the bead into some of the yoo hoo glue, yoo hoo glue, <laughs> um, and then just sort of stuck them in. Kind of got quite a few of them stuck to my fingers, but uh, I did my best. I used tweezers. I did the right thing first. <laughs> um, but yeah, once I've done all of that. Um, this unicorn was finally finished. Um, it was a long old project and I'm sorry that it's taken me so long to upload for a while. <laughs> but uh, if you're still here and still watching, thank you so much. You guys are the reason that I keep doing this. Um, if you are new here, welcome and please do take a minute to subscribe. These videos take me absolutely ages to make and it means the world to me when like, you subscribe and you continue watching and enjoying my content. Um, but otherwise, thank you for coming and thank you for watching and I guess I will see you in the next one guys. I will see you later. Bye!